All right, so now that we're done baling hay, what did you think of it? I think it was the worst. <laughs> it was the worst? It was just so hot and tiring. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tyler and welcome to our channel. We left the suburbs in 2022 to pursue our dreams of growing our own food and building a life of self-reliance. This video documents a huge milestone in, in that quest for self-reliance. I may not seem like it, I rarely do, but I'm really excited to tell this story. When we started our homestead two years ago, we had yet to purchase livestock of any kind. So our pastures were full of hay waiting to be cut and stored for the future. We didn't own a tractor yet, let alone any other equipment, so we paid for our hay to be cut. And that first year we got 46 large round bales at a cost of about $1,500. The following year we had cattle and ponies on much of our property, so we got less than half of that in the amount of hay, but we still paid $600 to have it done for us. We bought the bad boy 4025 in large part so we could move those large bales around. Everyone told us we wouldn't be able to move bales that large with, with that small of a, a tractor, a 25 horse tractor, but that turned out to be incorrect. I made a whole video about it, and in fact, it works really well. So in the first two years of our homestead, we paid over $2,000 to have others bale our hay. Had we purchased that same hay from outside sellers, it would have cost us more than double that amount. And while we were glad to have our own hay, we weren't really accustomed to paying anyone to well, do anything, really. So that wasn't something that we wanted to continue long term. We wanted to be self-reliant. We didn't want to incur that cost every year. And on our shoestring of a, of a homestead budget, that just wasn't going to be viable in the long term. In addition, our livestock headcount, as you can see behind me, was increasing. So the number of acres we could set aside for hay was getting smaller and smaller. But cutting, raking, baling hay, that was something that, that we had never done before. In fact, in all my life, that wasn't something that even occurred to me we would ever want or need to do. Of the many things that people told us our 25 horse bad boy wouldn't be able to do, baling hay was definitely on the list. But after doing my own research, I discovered that a 25 horse tractor can square bale. There's a video from the scientist hay farmer using a 25 horse Kubota that inspired me. And so I decided to try to find a baler. Not finding anything in good condition or affordable near us, I decided to look in the area of my hometown in the Midwest where farming equipment is plentiful and fairly affordable. I found a really old but well-maintained New Holland Super 66 and I asked my brother to go pick it up and store it for me until I could make the 700 mile trip to bring it home. Yep, we towed a 70 year old square baler behind a pickup truck 700 miles. We had a flat tire along the way, we were losing the clutch on the truck, but we made it home safely. We even picked up a sickle bar mower on the way, it's a Ford 501. The only thing we lacked was a rake, so I went back to Facebook Marketplace where I found an old worn out rake, a John Deere, that the owner ended up breaking. He ended up breaking while I was on my way to pick it up, so he gave us the whole thing for free. The farmer who owned the baler told us one of the knotters didn't like to tie consistently, so that needed to be addressed. I found that these old balers liked the style of twine that they were originally designed to use, which seems to be quite a bit thicker. You can see here from this side-by-side -side comparison, I couldn't find it locally, so I ordered it from Agzaga and had it delivered. I learned how to sharpen the cutters, how to adjust the tensioners on the twine discs, all the other maintenance that it needed, and we started trying to dial it in last fall through trial and error, but didn't have much experience at that time. It was mostly error, so I was a little nervous this year about how that would go. The sickle bar had to be totally rebuilt. I had never used it before. The rake was old, worn out, and already broken, and the baler was unproven. But we had our equipment, so all I needed was a way to get those bales back to our homestead. So I found this 18-foot travel trailer frame. We decided to pick it up for cheap and turned it into a hay wagon. Over the winter, we were given access to 27 acres of hay fields on our neighbor's property which was a huge blessing to us. That meant that we could open up more of our pastures for grazing and secure all the hay that we would need. We still need some more fencing down on that portion of our property, but we'll get there. With that, we just needed it to stop raining long enough to start cutting some hay. 
it's hard to complain about rain in these parts, but that's where we found ourselves earlier this year. I didn't video much because it was a busy time for me working my nine to five and trying to get all, the, all of the work done, but it turned out to be a huge success. My son Will was a huge help in cutting, doing all the cutting and all the raking, and then I did most of the baling. That old Super 66 made about 1,400 bales, and it hardly missed a knot. The only thing it won't do is transition from one ball of twine to another. So you just kind of have to keep an eye on when the ball is about to run out and then you're going to need to re-thread it manually when it does run out. Wasn't a big deal. The kids did an awesome job helping pick up the bales, get them stacked, stored away in the barns. And I could not be happier with the equipment and how everyone pitched in to make it a success. Nobody liked picking up the bales <laughs> and stacking them. But making the hay is actually pretty cool. It's honestly pretty satisfying and I'm kind of sad that it's over. This is a massive step forward for our homestead. There's people that want their hay cut for their ag exemption. It can be hard to find people to do it. That's a need that we can help fill. It feeds, obviously it feeds our cattle over the winter and even um, during times of the year like now where we haven't had much rain, pastures don't look so great. I can easily throw a, a square bale out every day or one in the morning and one in the afternoon to supplement their grazing. And that makes me feel good to be able to provide them for their needs. As it turns out, also we have a little more hay than we need. Um, and so I threw a post on Facebook Marketplace and now we're even recuperating some of our costs faster than I had planned. I intentionally made the bales a little bit smaller. Traditional bale would be 36 inches long. I made ours 32 inches long. Um, and a little bit lighter weight so that our kids could help lift them, participate um, also throughout the year and helping to feed and do chores. And I'm not sure that I want to lift 50 to 70 pound bales all winter either, so we like them the way they are. And that's the beauty of doing it yourself. You can customize it to the way you want it. And it turns out that other people like it too because they have sold, I've sold as many of them as I want to sell um, and we're already halfway to recuperating our costs. So honestly, after doing the math, cutting it this year and the cost savings there, plus what we've been able to sell. So basically we've already broken even. All right, so now that we're done baling hay, what did you think of it? I think it was the worst. It was the worst. <laughs> it was just so hot and tiring. It was very hot and tiring. It was pretty fun. You hated it. <laughs> yeah, I drove the truck. You drove the truck a little yeah. bit? All right. Other than that, though, you hated it, right? Okay, what was the worst part? What do you think? Yeah, definitely unloading. Unloading the bales into the barn? Yeah. Not picking up? Picking up actually wasn't that all the, all the hay dust, all like hot air, no circulation. Yeah. Stacking it sucked. That's what, that, what, that was the worst. All right, Will, you did most of the, well, you did all the cutting. How was the cutting with the sickle bar? Um, overall, it went pretty good. It got caught up and uh, got like all bunched up a couple times, had to back up and re-go. But after right. getting into a groove with the tall grass, it, um, it worked pretty well. I was able to go pretty fast sometimes. Yep. And the raking, how was the raking? Uh, raking was good. Raking is my favorite. It was pretty that was satisfying. Your, that was your Except favorite Except for a part. couple mishaps with uh, bad using on my part. But user error on your yeah, part? Yeah, user error on my part a couple times. Yeah. Some things adjusted wrong, but... You had good windrows and overall yeah, pretty good cutting, too. They're big and tall. Yep, yep. Worked out okay. How does it feel to be able to put the bales out for the cows now and know that you did it? It's pretty satisfying. I did virtually nothing, so... <laughs> I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> um, it's fun 
to know that we, we cut all that hay by ourselves. We did all of it. Do you guys know how many bales we cut and baled? For 1,400, right? Yeah, 1,400. Yep, not bad. All from over there, which is pretty cool. Yep, so you ready for it next year? I'm ready for a second cutting. Maybe in a few more months you'll be able to do it again, right? All right, that's pretty cool. We had a little help from someone else over here. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say? I'd rather do uh, round bales. <laughs> what? <laughs> rather do round bales because that's no work for you, huh? Where's you your work get, ethic at? You wouldn't get paid for any round bales, though. Got hay to feed for the whole rest of the year, and all the work is done. Ladies, may I pass? All right, I'm coming in. Wayne, what are you doing, girl? That's chicken food. That's not cow food. That's not cow food. That's chicken food. <laughs> That's not cow food. That's chicken food. You don't care, huh? That's not for you. That's not for you. <laughs> That's so good. Come on, let's get you out of here. Okay. All right, girl. You can't eat all the chicken's food. Come on, no. Come on, let's go. Let's go on out of here. Come on. No, you're going the wrong way, silly. Go this way. Go that way. <laughs> yes, you have to go out. You're, you're eating all the chicken's food. Come on. Out you go. There you go. There you go. You finding stuff you like out here? That's better. Uh, it's a more species appropriate diet. Oh, does that feel good? You got a head rub there. <laughs> <laughs>